Hello everyone, my name is Justin Bellman, long time no this, uh, uh, well, uh, hold on, just, uh, mm. hmm, that's too much tape, okay, commit to the bit, am I right, hold on, Amazon Go, because everyone else is doing it. So if you aren't already familiar, Amazon Go is Amazon's attempt at creating physical stores. They've done something similar already with their bookstores, but the gimmick here is that these are little, like, convenience stores in which you can walk in one turnstile, pick things off the shelves, and walk out of the other turnstile without ever checking out with a cashier. So these have been popping up all over the place, mostly in different major cities. Your boy here lives in Chicago, so uh, one of the cities they've been testing this out in is my city. And recently, they put one of these stores up in the building in which I work, so I started investigating. So for the last like week or so, I have been on a personal quest to figure out how exactly Amazon Go stores work. Because they give you little pamphlets, there's a little bit of an intro when you first open up the app, but there seems to be like, gaps in the information that you're actually receiving from Amazon. And it's not just like, oh, we're not telling you this because the technology is complicated. It's like, there's clear gaps in what they're telling consumers and what they're not. So I did way too much digging, all of the digging that you don't have to do so that we could sit here right now and talk about how does Amazon go really work. So as I said, what I knew going into this is pretty much what Amazon's PR team has already told people. So maybe you know some of this already as well. You scan the app when you walk into the store. There's weight sensors that tell you uh, when something's been taken so that it can check it out of the inventory. You can load up your cart or your bag or whatever. And then the store accounts for what's lost by charging your Amazon account. Sounds pretty straightforward. Sounds, sounds pretty sleek. Sounds like a good, you're in and out, Amazon Go. That is of course until I started asking myself, what do you do when there's more than one person inside of a store? And Amazon has been capable of answering Answering some questions around this topic, such as, can I pick up an item and put it back in a different place and will the system know? The answer is yes. What happens if you knock something off of a shelf, you let go of it, someone else scoops up the item and puts it back on the shelf for you? Can you do that? Yes, you can. So now you're probably thinking, if this has to do with like weight sensors in the counters and like placement, then how can you put something back in a different location or how can you trade hands? during the process. Because these are some questions that I had when opening up the app as well. Because when I downloaded the app, they do this little tutorial showing you how to work, uh, showing you how to work the app and work the store and whatever. And it says here that you can scan in multiple people when you go into the store and it'll know when it's like friends and family. So anything that your friends or family pick up off the shelves will also be registered and charged to your Amazon account. But on the other hand, you're not allowed to hand other customers items. So how does the app know when it's like a friend versus when it's a stranger? I All of these questions were going through my head when I first downloaded the app. But honestly, a lot of the questions that Amazon can answer are not the questions I'm interested in because a lot of those were solved with a very easy Google search. But the question that I want to know the answer to, which is also the answer to a lot of the other questions I had when I downloaded the app, is how does the Amazon Go app know when it's you, when there is more than one customer in a store, meaning that there is more than one card being checked in, how does it know which exact person is picking up a specific item off a shelf? Because I get it, right? You scan your app, you're checked into the store. So when you pick something up and walk out, you check out of the store. So how, how does that work when there's multiple people doing it? How does the app know that it's specifically you picking up an item? And the answer is kind of terrifying. And a big part of it involves that ceiling full of cameras. According to Wired, Amazon has said that the cameras in the store do not use facial recognition, which was my original thought as to how they could identify each person in the store. But according to Amazon, it's not how they do it. I'm assuming that's because there would be like multiple privacy hoops they would need to jump through in order for facial recognition to be okay. So I'm assuming they're just trying to avoid that. Instead, they use something called computer vision which according to Wired allows machines to see what is in front of them and determine what an object is to detect when an item has been taken from a shelf by a customer. Oh, okay, that's not so bad. And who has taken it? Yeah, I don't like that. Okay, so if you're like me, your immediate question is how? Like how? What is computer vision? How can a computer see what I'm doing? And how does it know that it's me? How can a computer determine 
who picked up an item. So I dug a little deeper. Computer vision is so complicated. <laughs> and apparently it's also not completely accurate technology yet. According to TechCrunch, in 1966, AI pioneer Marvin Minsky famously instructed a graduate student to connect a camera to a computer and have it describe what it sees, which is apparently, in scientific terms, very, very not easy. Like, we've gotten good at cameras, right? Like, we're, we're good at making cameras. There are cameras that can see stuff way better than we can see stuff. But it's processing things and describing those things is where cameras fall short because cameras are not brains. According to TechCrunch, despite the high fidelity of their outputs, these devices are in many ways no better than a pinhole camera from the 19th century. They merely record the distribution of photons coming in a given direction. The best camera sensor ever made couldn't recognize a ball, much less be able to catch it. Brains are hard to understand by brains, let alone be simulated or replicated in a computer. And yet we've gotten to a point where computers are fine at doing this. For example, Purdue University's eLab simulated what a camera can see with computer vision when fed specific information about specific objects, and here's what that looks like. So as you can see, it's pretty good. Cars are cars, roads are roads, buildings are buildings, trees are trees. But bikes are also cars, pavement is people, and rectangular shapes are buildings but they're not. So that's essentially what Amazon means when they say their cameras have computer vision. It's essentially this. The information is taken in by the camera, then that visual information is fed into a computer that sees it. It pairs that information with the purchase that the camera is witnessing, the item that it's already been trained to see, the person that it can now associate with the item that it knows, who is the same person who's checked into the store with the app when they scan it upon entry but it goes deeper. Because this computer vision is supported by something called deep learning, which is essentially advanced pattern recognition used to enhance the ability of the computer vision. In its simplest form, an example of deep learning would be like autocorrect learning a new word and putting it in your dictionary. In a more complex form, it would be something like Siri or Alexa learning the things that you like to search the most. And as it pertains specifically to Amazon Go and computer vision, it's a method of data collection used to help the computers see things better and more efficiently over time. So with that logic, the more that you specifically visit an Amazon Go location, or maybe any Amazon Go location, the more accurately the computer vision can track and learn about you, the more the camera sensors in the store can use deep learning to create a pattern to know when it is you, and basically it snowballs. Like, the better the software, the better the hardware, and that builds cumulatively off of itself. So the more you go in, the better it can see you, the better it can learn about you, the better it knows you. Maybe better is a word that I should stop using in this video. The creepier the software, the more invasive the hardware. There we go, that's better. So we get the basic premise of the store, right? Scan app, walk in, take stuff, walk out. When you walk in, the app checks you into the store. When you're walking around, the camera is tracking you and learning about you using computer vision. When you grab an item, there are sensors such as infrared and weight sensors to know when an item's been taken. And the camera's computer, by the way, has definitely already used computer vision to learn everything about every item in that store. So if I'm buying tape, each one of those cameras has information about what this looks like from every single possible angle. So when it's looking at it, it knows where it is and when it's being moved and can work with the weight sensors to know when it's being taken. So when you grab something off the shelf, the camera can now associate the item that it already knows about with who it's trying to learn about, who checked into the system with a QR code upon entry, which is associated with your Amazon account. So when you walk out of the store, the store can confirm that a purchase has been made. So the information flow is like inventory system to item to you, to your phone, to your account. We got it. But as we saw before, computers aren't always great at picking up foreign objects at first glance. So even if it can recognize that you are a person, how does it again know that it's specifically you the first time you're entering the store if it needs to learn about you first? So I dug a little deeper. And I found the original patent application for Amazon Go filed by Amazon back in 2015. But remember, this is before they started testing stores, and it was also four years ago by the time I'm recording this video, so things definitely could have changed between then and now based on, like, how they collected data, how they used the cameras, that kind of stuff. So this stuff may not be 100% uh, kosher still, but this is what I'm using as my basis for my understanding and to help you understand how the store works 
yeah, so let's get into it. First of all, let's use the patent to clarify and check our work so far. I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty, but we basically got it right. This is essentially what the patent says regarding how Amazon Go works on the most basic level. They collect data when you scan your QR code at the entrance. This data includes that there is a user when an item's being picked up, and in response to this information, the item will be associated with the user, like we mentioned before. Then when you leave the store, a second round of information is collected, wherein the store transfers control of the item you picked up to you basically checking you out of the store. Now that is, depending on if you've read 1984, a little bit creepy, but not as creepy as it's gonna get because like, okay, they're saying that data is collected and that's how they know that you are the specific user. But what data is being collected? Like what data is being collected when you walk in and then what data is being collected on that second round when you walk out? So a later claim in the patent is where it gets actually 1984. The first data, when you scan the code, includes at least a first image of a hand of the user before the hand of the user crosses a plane into the inventory location. A second image of the hand of the user after the hand of the user exits the inventory location. And determining based at least in part on the first data that the user has picked the item further includes comparing the first image and the second image to determine that the user has picked up the item. So it's possible that the computer vision that Amazon uses actually doesn't need facial recognition because it's not focusing on this. It's focusing on these, but it's not only your hands that they're tracking. In a later claim in the patent, Amazon says how they determine who the user is using the second data when you leave the store, which includes one or more of processing at least one image included in the second data determined the identity of the user. So using an image of you that the computers collect when the cameras are watching you leaving the store, detecting a personal identifier corresponding to the user included in the second data, using the image they use to collect some kind of data about your hair color, or if you're wearing glasses, or if you're wearing something special, or if you have one arm, I don't know, a personal identifier that it can look at you and be like, that is you, detecting a portable device in the possession of the user, your phone, which you use to get in the store, determining a unique identifier corresponding to the user included in the first data. So say I'm wearing glasses when I walk in the store, snaps a picture of me when I'm leaving the store, or snaps a picture of me if I'm wearing the glasses that knows that I'm the same person. Or monitoring a position of the user as the user moves toward an exit of the materials handling facility. So tracking you as you leave the store. Notice that it says that the second data round, so when you're leaving the store, includes one or more of these things. So maybe the first time that you enter, it tracks your movement to just get a lock on you. But the next time, it gets more accurate because now it can track your movement and it notices that both time you've entered the store, you've had a tattoo on your arm. So it seems that you have this exposed tattoo every time you enter the store. So from the second you walk into one of these Amazon Go stores, Amazon now has the information of your movement patterns, one or more personal identifiers, images of your hands and how they interact with items around the store, and the cameras and computers constantly learning how it can more and more accurately pick up on your patterns so that it knows more and more accurately that it is you every time you go into an Amazon Go store. And that tracking and those patterns get specific, especially when it comes to your hands. According to the patent, which again I will remind you is filed by Amazon, one or more images may be captured of the user's hand prior to it passing into the inventory location. Again, when the user's hand is removed from the inventory location, one or more images may be captured of the user's hand as it exits the inventory location. Those images may be compared to determine whether a user has picked an item from an inventory location or placed an item in the inventory location. It also says that they use identifiers such as skin tone color, so it can produce a range of similar skin tone colors to be able to confirm that the image of the hand when it's grabbing an item is the same image of the hand when it's putting back an item. Then it will presumably collect that data to be input for deep learning. Furthermore, upon detecting a user entering and or passing through a transition area, so entering or leaving the store, the user is identified. As discussed above, various techniques may be used to identify a user. For example, a camera may capture an image of the user that is processed using facial recognition to identify the user. Like I said, this is four years ago, and Amazon swears up and down that they don't use facial recognition in their computer vision, so this might just be old information that they changed since then, but this is also Amazon, and this is their patent. 
So, ah. In some implementations, one or more input devices may collect data that is used to identify the user when the user enters the material handling facility. This is in the Amazon Go store. The position of the user may also be monitored as the user moves about the materials handling facility, the Amazon Go store. When the position of the user enters or passes through a transition area, such as an entrance or an exit, the identity of the user is known because the position of the user and the identity of the user has been maintained. Okay, so I've thrown a lot of jargon at this camera today. So let's actually break down how this actually works. Like I said, I was going to from the beginning, from entrance to exit. You approach the turnstile of the Amazon Go store. An Amazon Go employee says hi to you as you scan your QR code and enter the store. From the second you scan that QR code, the cameras take an image of you and then they start monitoring you as you walk throughout the store. As you walk throughout the store, the cameras are using computer vision and deep learning to start recognizing patterns in your movement and learn more about you as you walk throughout the store. The cameras take note of one or more personal identifiers from the image taken of you when you first walked into the store. As you pick up and put back items in the store, cameras and sensors take images of your hands as well as the items that you've touched. Weight sensors, infrared, and scales will be able to tell what items you picked up and from where in the store. When you've decided what you want, Amazon will remove it from its inventory system and start to track the item that it's learned about through computer vision throughout the store, now associating it with you who it's learning about as you're walking throughout the store, which it's able to do since it has identified and tracked you from the second you walked in. And as you're leaving the store, a second round of data, which may include images of you, your item, your hands, your phone, and your personal identifiers, will be collected. The information of the item is then associated with you, Amazon controls ownership of the item from the store to you, and uh, you can leave the store. You get a receipt, then you move on with your day. Now is Amazon keeping the data that it's collected and analyzed? That'd be probably, yeah. What are they doing with that data? Are they selling it? They say that they don't, but they could start sharing your data like Facebook does to increase personalization through their services. Like with Facebook, it creates a more personalized news feed. Maybe Amazon works with advertisers to create a more personalized suggested shopping list based on not only things you've purchased, but things you've looked at in the store, things you've touched with your hands because Amazon has all that information. They know what you've looked at and put back. But maybe most importantly, does this open up the doors for Amazon to start profiting off of data collection when potential competitors start trying to follow their store model? I mean, probably. They could easily share the data that they've collected on us, the users. Will they do it? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe something worse. So that's essentially how Amazon Go works. I hope that either eased your mind or terrified you for your next experience going into an Amazon Go store. More like an Amazon Oh No store. <laughs> So what do you think? Will you or have you used Amazon Go stores? Why or why not? Is your data something that you don't particularly care about protecting? Does something else about the stores potentially creep you out more than like the potential extreme privacy violations? Is this different for you than having your data shared on say Facebook or Google or even potentially other Amazon services who already share your data? If it is different for you, then how? I'd like to know. So let's keep the discussion going in the comments down below because I am fascinated and terrified. All right, that is all I have for you today. Like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, hit that bell so you're notified every single time I upload a new video, and I will see you next time.